communication and petition. Uh, On the agenda, we have a presentation by the Court Network Chamber of Commerce. However, uh, Ms. Trisha brought to the email at 5.30 p.m. Sorry. Someone is on this last meeting, and we're having the dog file. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Shanta, we got it. Trisha Brooks sent an email at 5.43 p.m. stating that they have a meeting set um, for a presentation tonight. Okay. Shanta. Thank you, Ms. Shanta. Uh, Your entry is not valid. Uh, Shanta, I'm here. Oh, okay. Yeah, that I'm was sorry. to say that um, we have a visual presentation to accompany the audio that we're doing. So I sent all of okay. mayor and council and you guys the link to join so that you could view the visual at the same time that we're doing the audio. Okay. Okay. Are, are we good to continue? Okay, great, wonderful. Well, um, we just wanna say thank you um, to Mayor Norton and to council for having us here this evening. We're very appreciative. And um, I, I think everybody kind of heard a little bit of this going into it. Um, we are actually doing a visual presentation for mayor and council and for all attendees that are on the phone tonight. And the best way to link into that is by going to the Chamber of Commerce website which is visitportwentworth.com. And on our homepage, there's a link that you can join to view our presentation um, on your computer or your iPhone um, or um, any other type of phone so that you can follow along and see the visual presentation this evening. And with that, um, are, Shanta, am I ready to move forward? You okay, wonderful, wonderful. Well, thank you again to Mayor and Council. We appreciate it. And tonight, um, we're gonna give a brief overview. Um, there were some questions at the April Council meeting about um, some of our um, projects and how exactly um, the Chamber and the City work together to execute these contracts. So first of all, and I know we have a couple new council members um, and we have some that have been through this before, so I'm so sorry, I apologize for the repetition, but I'm just going to go over um, a little bit of Hotel Motel Tax Law 101 to begin with. And this information is taken from the Georgia Department of Community Affairs Office of Research and Surveys through training that individuals like myself go through. And this one is from Accommodations Tax 101. So um, just to start off, OCGA 48-13-50, purpose and intent. It is declared to be the purpose and intent of the General Assembly that one, each county and municipality in this state shall be authorized to levy certain excise taxes as here and after provided in this article, and two, funds be made available for the purposes of promoting, attracting, stimulating, and developing conventions and tourism in the counties and municipalities and for the provision of other local government services. So that being said, um, OCGA 48-13-51, which outlines county and municipal levies on public accommodations, charges for promotion of tourism conventions and trade show. So Port Wentworth actually um, collects 6% and we go by the OCGA 48-13-51A 3.2. So um, without get, going over all of the information, because I know as we all know, the hotel motel tax law is quite lengthy. Under this 6% collection, what this means is the city of Fort Wentworth receives 50.01% of total collections, which are unrestricted funds. The Savannah Convention Center in downtown Savannah receives 16.66% of total collections, which are also unrestricted funds. What unrestricted funds means is that this money goes to, say for example, the 50.01% that the city of Fort Wentworth collects, that goes to their general fund and can be used for any purposes. There are no restrictions, meaning it can be used for salaries, it can be used for projects, it could be used to buy a fire truck, unrestricted. Now the Chamber of Commerce or nonprofit um, designated um, that receives like we do in Fort Wentworth, we receive 33 and a third percent of total collections to execute the tourism contract with the city. Now these are restricted funds, meaning that we use these funds for specific purposes. 
we use it to promote tourism. Now, what does that mean? According to OCGA 48-13-50.24, promoting tourism conventions and trade shows is defined as planning, conducting, or participating in programs of information and publicity designed to attract or advertise tourism conventions and trade shows. Now, specifically for Port Wentworth, out of our agreement for lodging excise tax distribution contract, use of funds section six, that specifically means, upon receipt of all funds from the city, the chamber agrees that it will provide marketing, public relations, advertising, sponsoring of special events, Sure. 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 That is definitely not for my end. Thank you. Thank you, Shanta. So let me start over that. I'm, upon receipt of all funds from the city, the chamber agrees that it will provide marketing, public relations, advertising, sponsoring of special events, assistance to other Port Wentworth organizations and businesses for purposes of promoting tourism, conventions and trade shows, and other services and work programs to promote the city's tourism, conventions, and trade shows. All funds received under this agreement shall be expended only for the purposes set forth therein. Now, DCA also requires that each municipality has a budget. So according to OCGA 48-13-51A9A, Local governments must adopt a tax budget plan specifying how restricted funds will be expended. When contracting with other entities, government must require them to provide expenditure budgets. Contractor budgets, including CBVs, chambers, etc., must be incorporated into local government's tax budget plan. Cost allocation plans might be required if contractor has multiple revenue sources. Applying that to Port Wentworth. Every year, the Chamber submits a tourism marketing proposal which details proposed projects, a tourism budget, and an indirect cost allocation schedule. This is submitted to the City Attorney by the Chamber's Attorney for review. Once the City Attorney has reviewed, the items are submitted to the Clerk of Council and added to the agenda for the June meeting of Mayor and Council for approval for the upcoming fiscal year, which begins July 1st. So that means the chamber adopts the same budget um, time frame as the municipality, July 1st through June 30th. Contract execution. The fiscal year budget does begin July 1st, but the contractor, meaning the chamber, does not collect monies from the current fiscal year until two months after the contract begins. The process. Just say, for example, the month of July, the first uh, month in the fiscal year, Hotels collect hotel motel taxes in Port Wentworth, once again, that's 6%. Now, by August 20th, the July hotel motel taxes are due to the city, meaning that those monies collected from the, each, each hotel have to be into the city by August 20th or they're late. Then that means that the September 1st, the July hotel motel taxes are distributed to the contractor, meaning the chamber. The contractor uses their own funds for two months and is reimbursed for contracted tour ex tourism expenses two months later. The chamber uses the accrual method of accounting to account for the lapse between expenses and reimbursements for the fiscal year. This gives a more realistic idea of income expenses during the fiscal year and for our reporting purposes. So we submit um, our tourism report expenses monthly. July, for example, is submitted in August to the municipality. The collections for July are unknown to the contractor until September when the funds are distributed to the contractor, the chamber. This is why the contractor is unable to provide July income versus July expenses. The income reporting is always two months behind the expense reporting. So then we want to go in and talk about the economic impact of tourism in Port Wentworth. So we have a tourism plan, which we um, work with the city to create. The purpose of the tourism marketing plan is to promote Port Wentworth as a travel destination, encourage investment, and to make the community the best place possible for the existing residents. 
revenue generated by visitors means increased revenues to the City of Port Wentworth's general fund. This decreases the tax burden to residents and businesses. This plan and subsequent, subsequent plans are designed to grow each target project outcome from year to year and fully support the advertising and marketing needs of the City of Port Wentworth, its citizens, tourists, and business community. Now our goal is to increase visitation and extend length of stay by positioning Port Wentworth as the year round top choice of stay when visiting the Savannah and coastal Georgia area. And our objective is to continue to increase hotel motel bed tax revenues by at least 5% over the next fiscal collection year through increased media placement, targeted marketing and targeted PR efforts. That means, and, and I think a lot of this, a lot of times this gets confusing, but tourism is economic development and it has a huge impact on our city. And how do we measure the impact in, that tourism has on our community? Well, several ways, reporting, the hotel motel tax revenues collected by the city of Fort Wentworth that we receive every month, and by research through Smith Travel Research or STR or STAR Report is known in the industry. So we use historical trend analysis and monthly destination reporting to come up with and do forecasting for how we're doing and how we think we're going to do in the future. So hotel motel tax collections, how does this impact uh, Fort Wentworth? Well, over the past decade, the marketing efforts of the chamber have led to increased overnight stays in Fort Wentworth hotels, increased occupancy rates, and higher average daily rates. This is everything that we track on a monthly basis. This has led to increased hotel motel bed tax collections for the city of Fort Wentworth. So hotel motel tax collections for the past 10 years have, equaled, have brought in almost $7.3 million in hotel motel tax collections in Port Wentworth. That means that the money generated for the city of Port Wentworth's general fund is nearly $3.7 million through marketing efforts and tourism dollars in our city that goes to the city's general fund. Now getting into um, questions from April. So there were some questions about why there were St. Patrick's Day um, expenditures on our report for March. Well, we just kind of wanted to delve into this and explain the process, um, as this is one of our contracted um, projects with the city that we do every year. So March has historically been the largest hotel motel tax collection month for the city of Port Wentworth, and this is largely due to St. Patrick's Day visitors. The chamber targets markets within a six hour drive of our city. Um, we've done research in the past and this is where a majority of our visitors are coming from. Marketing begins well in advance of the event due to targeting overnight guests which reserve rooms in advance. The goal is to increase overnight visitation which will increase revenues for hotels, restaurants and local businesses. This also creates additional revenue for the city through increased hotel motel tax collections. Now the project budget was $5,000 for this project. The objective once again was to capture the lar largest market share of overnight visitors coming to the greater Savannah area for the event. And we have always been very successful in doing so. So the outcome this year was different than previous years. The city of Savannah canceled the St. Patrick's Day event on March 11th due to COVID-19. This was seven days before the event. Advertising, has already ran and was already booked. Through our hard work and negotiation, we were able to recoup all but $639.69 of the project budget, saving $4,360.31 from the total budget. So another question that we had was a marketing and PR firm. So, and this is a little bit longer explanation, it's not as cut and dry. As many chambers and destination marketing organizations do, the Port Wentworth Chamber of Commerce have contracted with marketing and PR agencies. The agencies have provided a multitude of services ranging from small design projects to large feasibility studies. The chamber has contracted with agencies since 2007, when the city and the chamber worked together to rebrand the city and create the Sportsplex Feasibility Study. Port Wentworth has gone through two community rebrands since then, the most recent being 2016. And um, a number of the actual city and council people now were part of that process. 
Since that time, the Chamber has undertaken many projects and has worked hand in hand with city leadership to craft a brand image and message that our community can be proud of. These initiatives have proven to be effective in creating a brand that creates trust, appeal, and attracts new visitors to our doorstep every year. This is proven in the hotel motel tax collection figures. Another reason that agencies are used is to have access to programs, research, and professionals that a community of our size and budget simply just cannot afford on our own. A few examples include design software, research, programmers, bulk purchasing discounts, professional designers, and per-project fees. This current fiscal year alone, to date, our organization was able to save over $17,839 by utilizing an in-house agency. We were also able to push out positive stories and messages that generated over 4 million opportunities to see. Services include, but are not limited to, print design, brochures, web design, branding, logo design, city guide design, research, event support, copywriting, billboard design, video, video production, fam trips, digital media ad design, reporting, and retreat facilitation. So now we've got, for everybody that's following along with us, um, these are some um, pictures from the first community rebrand that we did, and we had a great group of individuals involved, a group of 30 plus, and you can see in here we've got residents, we have business owners, we have elected officials, and we have spouses in here. So it's really great to see that we have a very diverse group of people that participated in this project. And out of using and working with our previous marketing and PR firm, the wonderful community brand that we've used to date, Savannah's Front Porch was created. Now moving on to our current marketing and PR firm and the Chamber and City partnership that has developed over the years. The Chamber has been working with our current marketing and PR agency, Leslie Francis PR, since 2018. The agency has a staff of six employees that work with the Chamber and through the city. It is accepted practice for Chambers and DMOs to use marketing and PR firms. The Chamber's 2019 annual retreat, and for those following, not following along, we have some pictures of all of our participants that participated in that day-long retreat, um, you know, is with here is facilitated by the LFPR team. The retreat was an all-day event, and board members, along with city council members and city staff, partic participated in media training led by Leslie Francis, president and CEO. It was an opportunity for everyone to learn discuss the current FY19 marketing projects at the time and goals and to brainstorm about the current fiscal year FY20 tourism marketing projects. It was a great day and Ms. Francis received positive feedback after the event from many city representatives. All right, and the last um, point was about some um, duplication of some expenditures on the report. So for those of you guys not following along, we actually have some um, great photos to look at. And those last questions have to do with our uh, heritage tourism development projects that we've been working on for a decade. So why heritage tourism? Well, according to um, the Georgia Department of National Resources Historic Preservation Division, Tourism, the world's largest industry, is essential to a community's economic vitality, sustainability, and profitability. In Georgia, tourism is the state's second largest industry, and heritage tourism is its fastest growing segment. Georgia is among the top 10 states in the country in heritage tourism visitation. More travelers than ever are walking the historic streets of Savannah, visiting the remnants of Native American culture, exploring antebellum plantations, learning about the civil rights movement and discovering agri agricultural history around the state. The historic and cultural resources associated with people, events, or aspects of a community's past give the community its sense of identity and help tell its story. These resources are the most tangible reflection of a community's heritage. History can and should be used as a selling point for a community. The recognition of an area's historic resources can bring about neighborhood revitalization, increased and sustainable tourism, economic development through private investment, and citizenship building. When communities, travel-related entities partner with public or private organizations, 
the historic, cultural, and natural resources are more effectively promoted to meet the heritage traveler's desire for an integrated and enriching experience. So that brings us to what we've been doing um, through the chamber and working with the city for the past decade to create heritage tourism in our community because there's so many aspects of it and we meet so many of the state of Georgia's economic development tourism divisions pillars on what a community, you know, what they're focusing on to bring people to your community. So in 2010, the chamber was presented with an opportunity with a donation of six cotton gins to be used in a proposed heritage tourism site. The chamber and city agreed that this was an opportunity not to be missed as our city is known as the birthplace of the cotton gin. Because of the historic nature and age of these relics, they must be stored in a climate controlled setting. Some are quite large and one unit was not enough to store, store all six cotton gins. That is why there are two cotton, there, there are two charges for the same amount on the same day. There were no mistakes recorded in the financial reports and are correct as submitted. Um, and this was something that we actually, um, and where they're housed now, um, it was actually owned at the time by the Floyd family who are members of our board. And um, that is why we chose to store them in that location and they've been stored there ever since. And just to quickly um, let you guys know, um, some, projects that we've been working on for a decade to house these cotton gins and a lot of artifacts that the chamber has been collecting over the years, which are artifacts, but also oral histories of the residents of Port Wentworth. Um, and we've had many oral histories collected and we've actually done documentaries in the past few years, including those oral histories. So one of the first projects started in 2010 and um, Mr. Glenn Jones uh, can, was part of all of this, and we actually went and did a presentation to our Chatham Del De uh, County delegation about this project. So we wanted to do a proposed cultural arts and heritage center. It would include a visitor center, a museum and heritage center outlining the history of Port Wentworth and the surrounding areas, a possible library and archive center, and also it would be an opportunity for our citizens and tourists um, for event rental opportunities for weddings, church and family reunions, uh, special events and private events. They would include a boardroom, staff offices, and a trolley stop to connect Port Wentworth to the historic area of downtown Savannah. Um, and basically the goals of this were to transform Port Wentworth into a destination location, target tourist-driven markets to generate tourism revenue for the local economy, weave the community closer together, including the businesses, tourists, and residents of Port Wentworth, and increase community involvement. So the first proposal was actually for the city-owned property on Highway 21 next to Richmond Baptist Church. And you can see here, this is an outline of the property. Um, it is an odd shape, and this is um, what the proposal was. And also, um, they were wanting to put in some permanent parking for the Richmond Baptist Church congregation. As you know, um, there's a parking issue there. So that was one of the things we were also trying to do um, is to put a buffer up to preserve their historic cemetery and graves and also provide parking. So that is no longer um, an offer. That is no longer now an opportunity for that parcel length or, or other plans in the works for that piece of property. But then um, the most recent, which we submitted and proposed to the city um, starting last year was for a new project behind City Hall in the open property where the chamber currently hosts the Oyster Race Barbecue and Music Festival. So as you can see, this is a wonderful building. And um, this was a place where we could permanently house the cotton gins and the artifacts and the oral histories and really be a place where the community could come in and have a pride in a project in our area to preserve the history of the area, but also as the first exit in Georgia. Um, this is something where um, we've worked with the state and had many conversations that as a first exit, it would be a great to get people off that exit and come and um, basically visit a project like this. So that is why we are housing um, cotton gins in climate controlled storage. So that is the end of our presentation right now. We are trying to get through it quickly in our allotted time. Um, I just wanna know if anybody had any questions about anything presented. Hello, sir. Yes, sir, I can hear you loud and clear. Uh, 
Thank you, sir. Okay. on there because um, with our, and, and you keep saying PR firm, and I understand it's confusing saying PR firm, but it's actually a marketing and PR firm is outlined. Yeah, gotcha. So what it is, is we actually have contracted and we contracted with this agency and before our previous agency, 365. And what it is, is by contracting with these people, we can actually do a lot of projects for a much reduced charge. And as I said earlier, by contracting with this agency and their staff of six, we're able to get into discounts that we cannot get into on our own. So basically this year, and you'll see actually um, in the financial reports here, it actually went down to now $2,000 because we were paying more per month to offset larger projects that we were completing that were outlined in our annual marketing plan. One of those big projects includes a new website, new brochures, videos, a city guide, and all of that. So those are, so we're not paying one person this amount a month. It's part of an annual plan to actually complete all the projects that are outlined in our annual tourism proposal. Sure. Yes. Uh, and that. And I think, you know, that would be great. And I would, yeah, when great. I read, when I read your report, I'm looking at $74,000 a month going to, a, you know, a marketing company. And I'm thinking the chamber is a marketing company. Now, that's me as a layman trying to figure out where that money's going, trying to be a good steward of the taxpayer's money. I just had that question. To, Someone to explain to me why that was being used. And, and again, too, yeah. And again, too, I would love for you to call me, too, because I have an open door policy. At any time, if you have any questions whatsoever, I encourage anybody on council to call me and I will sit down and I will explain everything to you in great detail. Um, and, too, you know, if, if, I'm, if you want me to make a presentation at city council, like tonight, I'm more than willing to do that. I just need advance notice so that I can prepare to come in and give you all the information that you require. Well, thank you, sir. Oh, no, sir, not at all. Sir, sir, I've worked in this position for 11 years. I don't get offended anymore. <laughs> Yep. Well, I hope, no problem, no problem, but I hope you can see by tonight and how we've outlined some of this that we do everything that we can to minimize the cost for projects that we're doing and we work hard to save as much money as we possibly can. You're welcome, sir. Hello, sir. Thank you. Okay, the question I have is, uh, in, in the future, you mentioned that uh, you meet with the city and everything when they need to discuss um, uh, the reporting and uh, anything else is all Do you know when the last time that occurred? Or well, what has I been yeah, basically what we mean is uh, we want everybody to know that there are many forms of economic development and tourism is a huge driver of economic development in Fort Wentworth. Last year alone, just from overnight stays, we had our visitors coming here and fused over $30 million in our local economy just in Fort Wentworth. So when we talk about economic development efforts and attracting new investment, tourism is our number one goal because it has such a huge impact on our local economy. And what we do is the last time that we did that, and uh, it was in February of last year. And sir, you were there, you were part of it. And we had you know, our city administrator and other elected officials that are still on council. And we went through that process through the whole day and we talked about what we can do to improve our city. And that was the event that was facilitated by um, Leslie Francis and her team. So um, 
how we look at it is, is that, you know, we try to do every year when we do our annual retreat, we invite every single, we invite, you know, every single council member, we invite city staff because we all want to be on the same page. And, you know, we're all in this together. And it, and it really, the better that the chamber does in promoting and, and bringing tourists to our area, the more money it means for the bottom line of the city. And, and really, that's what we're trying to do. So, February of last year was the last time that we sat down because normally we would do it this year, but with COVID and everything that happened, we weren't unable to. We were unable to. Um, yeah, I did. Yeah, there were. Um, yeah, there were several council members there that day. Yes. Hi, sir. I'm good. How are you doing tonight? Thank you, sir. Yeah, that is, there are very strict guidelines with that. So you have to be very careful because we've looked into this in the past, but um, we have, that's why we've made these presentations to do a building um, that would, this, you know, house all of the artifacts and the cotton gins that we had. Um, in the past, there's been a couple of presentations or a couple of things that have been brought up to the chamber. One of those was moving into the old city hall and that just wasn't um, an option because there wasn't enough space. And another one was at Houston. And when we went through and did all the research for that one, I can give you um, the study on that that showed why that wasn't going to be, um, wasn't going to be an option. So that's why we've gone through and we've really tried like with the present, I know you're new and you haven't seen it yet. And I can give you the information the, um, you know, the, the property and the proposal that we made to build that structure behind City Hall, um, where it's something where it could also be big enough as well to house some city offices as well. So it could be a, a combined effort. Okay. Yeah, I Yeah, we have 1,800 square feet for the Chamber of Commerce, and we can provide you too. Every year, we do a um, we do basically a study where we go around and we get information from every single available space, um, retail space, and every single year because um, we've had questions about that. Um, it would basically double our cost right now if we went into another rental facility. But the chamber for many years since 2010 has been trying to find our permanent home. And that's why we've been trying to be creative and trying to work with the city to create a project that would hit multiple goals where we could be housed in a permanent location to run the visitor center and that. And then we could also use it as an attraction because right now we do not have a bricks and mortar attraction that people are coming to Port Wentworth to visit. So um, also it could provide this project up behind City Hall and possibly provide more space for permanent um, city offices there as well. So there's, and it could become a revenue generator, like we said before, where we could use it and you do events, the city could hold events on the property, similar to what we do for the oyster roast there. We could also rent it out. You could have, um, you know, event rentals for family reunions, for weddings. We could also, another thing is working with, we have so many industries around us right now, and a lot of our hotels bring in money and revenue from these accounts with these bigger organizations that have to bring in individuals from other cities for training and for so forth. This could be a location where they could hold events there in Port Wentworth, stay in our Port Wentworth hotels and not necessarily always go to Savannah or go to other, you know, areas out here. So it's a really, there's a lot of opportunity here. Um, 
for us to really create a project that will not only be something that the residents here can use, it'll be attractive to industry, and it will also be a place where people can come and learn about the history of this area. Okay. Where you're at. Yes, yeah, there is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we have, yeah, and it's actually bigger than that, but then we also have storage as well. We have a huge storage space, so all of our event, um, for all of our events that we do, the fishing tournament and for the oyster rows, we have all that storage as well, so we don't have to pay for storage. Okay. No problem, and hey, if you want to go and look at that um, proposal that I have in detail, just let me know. I'd be more than happy to meet with you and go over that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, sir. Anyone else? Yeah, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor. All right. All right. Uh, committee report. Do we have any committee reports? 